tell you, you know, you know and love my next guest from his 2016 presidential run, his work as a senator, and from the Transformer movies. Please welcome Senator Bernie Sanders. Good to see you again. <laughs> wow. Wow. Everywhere you go, right? Yeah. Everywhere you go, other than the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> Your Vermont primary was today, okay? What are you doing here? <laughs> Shouldn't you well, be in I Vermont? Voted, I voted in the morning. Okay. It was around the state the other day. I think we're going to do just fine. Okay. No worries. Because you don't want you, you don't want to pull a Crowley here. No, we don't. Because that was a surprise. Crowley didn't think he had to campaign hard enough, and Ocasio Cortez came in there and cleaned his clock. And okay. That, and that was a good thing too. Okay. All right. You uh, you've actually been uh, campaigning with uh, with uh, she used to work for you actually for your campaign, and uh, you've been out there with uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, like there. And. Both of you identify as democratic socialists. What does that what does that mean? Well, I think it means among other things that if you work 40 hours a week in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, you should be earning a living wage 15 bucks an hour. That's what it means. <laughs> it it means it means Stephen, it means that we end the international disgrace of the United States being the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a right while we end up spending twice as much per capita on health care as any other major nation. It, it means that we understand that the future of this country are our young people and that it is insane that hundreds of thousands of bright young kids cannot afford to go to college because of the income of their families and many others are leaving school deeply in debt, and we're going to make public colleges and universities tuition free. Yeah. And, it, and it means that as global citizens, people who understand that we have a moral obligation to leave a healthy planet to our children and grandchildren, we're going to stand up to Trump, and we're going to transform our energy system in this country away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energies. That's what it means. <clears throat> okay. So, other people, other people have espoused those ideas without calling themselves socialists. Ever since the, the New Deal, and certainly since the Great Society, the Democratic Party has been associated with the social safety net and been essentially been socialism curious. But why, why do you need to call yourself socialist? Because that has such, that's freighted with so much negativity in the I'll, United States. I'll tell States. you why. I, okay, I, I'm, I'm just saying that, like, people are very excited about Ocasio-Cortez. I've had her in the seat. She's very impressive. But the people that she campaigned for did not win their primaries. Only half the people you campaigned for won their primaries right. so far. So maybe, maybe there's a little, there's a little taint to socialism I, that turns people I don't, off. I don't really think so. I think the real issue is that the ideas that we have been talking about, almost without exception, Stephen, are now ideas that are mainstream ideas that are supported by the vast majority of the American people. Uh, and I think also people in their gut understand that we're living in a really strange moment in American history above and beyond Donald Trump, which is very strange. What but, is stranger than Donald Trump? What is well, stranger? What I, what, this is what might be, <laughs> might be stranger, is that we're looking at a time where we have an out-of-control capitalism, where the greed of the people on top is really unbelievable. I mean, right now, right now in America, you got three people 
who own more wealth than the bottom 50% of the American people. You got the top one-tenth of 1% one owning more wealth than the bottom 90%. You got one guy, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, his wealth is increasing every single day by $250 million a day, but he pays his workers, many of his workers, wages that are so low that many of them are on food stamps or Medicaid. You got a situation today where the big money interests can now contribute hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into elections to elect candidates to represent the wealthy and the powerful, which is undermining American democracy. And I think people are sick and tired of the greed and the power of a handful of people on top. They want a government which represents all of us, not just the 1%. Well, who do you... I think, I think all that is well taken. Who do you blame? Or do you, do, you, do you think that the Democrats do a better job of staring down big money and corporations and uh, the, uh, the excesses of late-stage capitalism, as many people call it, or, or, or do you blame the Republicans totally for this? Well, I think what we have now is a Republican Party which in the last 30 years has moved uh, very, very far to the right. Uh, you have the Koch brothers... Uh, one of the wealthiest families in this country, whose ideology is now the ideology of the Republican Party and of Trump. You have a president in Donald Trump who campaigned, let's not forget, told the American people he would not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And then, because he believes in this Trump ideology, he brought a budget forward which called for a trillion dollar cuts in Medicaid. He called for $500 billion in Medicare and $60 billion in the Social Security Disability Fund. This is after he gave a trillion dollars in tax breaks to the top 1% over a 10-year period. So but, I, you, but the Democrats are also seem beholden to big money, too. Absolutely. It's not like they turned down the checks. No, you're absolutely right. And I think uh, that what I have been trying to do, what Alexandria is trying to do, is to transform the Democratic Party so that they open their doors to young people and working people and becoming a party of ordinary Americans, not just big money interests. And that's something I have been working on really hard. If things are... And let me just, let me just say, Stephen, that all over this country, what we are seeing is something extraordinary. We're seeing a lot of people, for the first time, often women, people of color, young people, running for office from school board, or in the case of Alexandria, to the U.S. Congress. And not all of them, but many of them are actually winning. We have to take a little break, but we'll be right back with more Senator Bernie Sanders.